Okay, uh, everybody see my screen eh? Boleh nampak screen? Okay, can, you can hear me eh? Can hear me eh? Thanks. Alright, alright, thank you. So, um, okay, so we are going to continue to chapter 6, which is on mechanical activation system. So, last week, we have learned about pneumatic and magnetic activation system eh? So, for today is that we are going to learn about mechanism which is mechanical actuation So the short form for mechanical actuation is called as mechanism. Eh? So the letting outcome that we'll be covering for this topic will be an LO2 and 3, which is LO2 is explain the working principle of the mechanism. And uh, LO3 will be on analyzing and selection, the integration of the mechanism into the mechanical system. Eh? So uh, after completing, should able to explain the difference of the different type of mechanism explain the basic operation of mechanism and apply the mechanism to any system okay any uh, mechanical system so um okay i will just skip this this one is the normal thing so we are, what what we are going to learn is uh, on this topic a eh, actuation system and i skip that okay. Okay, so um, okay, what is an actuator? So this is a revision from last week. So a revision is actuator is a uh, uh, is something that produces mechanical movement or motion. Okay, and then the input normally uh, is either electric signal, uh, air pressure, or fluid motion. So this is input. What we uh, when we talk about input type into the actuator is normally on the magnetic actuator, hydraulic actuator, or electrical actuator so for mechanism there's no input eh? okay because it's linkages and um, so on uh, much linkages um, gears and output will be linear or rotary motion and force and value so uh, most um, for mechanism mostly later on you will understand that for mechanism there is no input the input normally will be motion the input will be normally either linear motion linear input and output will be rotary. So input to rotary and so on. So electrical signal, so for those actuators that have input signal, so if you have, uh, it can be low power or high power, and in case of low power signal, additional circuit is required to drive the actuator. means that we need to have an amplifier to amplify the signal. Okay? And the working range can be from few microns to few meters. So you may wonder, where does this few microns? What type of actuator or what type of system where you need to have a few microns displacement? Okay, let's uh, I give you an example. Eh? Um, uh, in week, in week, I think in the first chapter, eh, in the introduction to mechatronics chapters, I have uh, shared to you about the uh, semiconductor processes. Yeah? Where semiconductor processes, uh, we have uh, in the front of uh, front of line, we have the die attached processes, we have the wafer sawing, we have the wire bonding processes. Eh? So those processes normally require very few, very small displacement, means that in micrometer, maybe sometimes it will be in with nanometer. Eh? So this is where you need to have the working range in few microns. Eh? And few meters, uh, uh, or from meters, or uh, from Centimeter to meter, uh, maybe in uh, example, if in a tractor, you need to have displaced the pneumatic actuator in a in a uh, to expand the truck to a few uh, to to the maximum extension. So maybe in one meter or two meters, it depends on uh, what displacement that you set. Eh? So um, so this one I have explained. We have a, a three main actuator, and this three main actuator is actually um, supported by mechanism. Okay? Mechanism, which is the mechanical actuator. And what are mechanisms? So these are the example of mechanism. Okay. Well, first one is linkages. So what you're going to learn is this six main mechanism. Of course, this one will be the general mechanism. Okay. So the first one is linkages. Second one is camp and follower. Third one is gear. Fourth one is drag and pinion. 
fifth one is chain drive and lastly is belt drive okay for the total six today eh, we will try to finish up uh okay, we have roughly about one hour and ten minutes eh? but i think we can actually finish up early okay since i have shared to you in the slide all the video here you can go through it i'm not going to play the video okay so first let us look at uh element so the one that i list just now was the element of me the mechanical element or mechanism eh? so example that i show here is that red and green net can be used to convert rotary motion to linear motion so when you talk about mechanism normally it's something that you want to change the motion either to transfer the motion from rotary to rotary or from rotary to linear or from linear to rotary so how you want to transfer the motion depending on the setup that you are using eh? So, example of a uh, mechanical element you can see here in the first uh, figure is crank rocker parallel. This is an example of a four bar link. And the second one is a gear type, which is the spur, spur gear. Third one is the back pulley or parallel gear. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, a back pulley. So, back pulley, where, where, where does back pulley commonly, commonly use eh, in daily life? Anyone? Bicycle. Back Bicycle, no. Bicycle, no. Bicycle using timing belt. Uh, using this, look around macam timing belt lah kan? Bicycle belt and pulley ke? You have a gearing, right? You have something like uh, the teeth, right? So, it's not belt and pulley. Belt and pulley is just a belt. Yeah? So, but. Example, eh? Example. In a production system, okay, you have a conveyor, right? Conveyor moving, so that conveyor belt normally have the back pulley motion, eh? So it's going to pull the conveyor, eh? Okay, thank you. Sapa tanya jawab tadi, eh? Alright. Um, cam and follower, okay? This I show you, I share to you in Telegram. Cam and follower, example of cam and follower. Okay, so example one example uh, was in an uh, engine, eh? In engine, so we look like, uh, that. Later, we are look, going to look into that uh, example and why I actually share uh, in Telegram example, lots of uh, example of engine, V6 eh? engine. If you see that, we have uh, lots of engine. The common one is the uh, four-cylinder engine, eh? the common one, four-cylinder. Um, but of course, the one that higher end means a sports car, they have the eight, uh, V8 engine, uh, V6 engine. So V6 engine is that the engine is look like this and we have if you look to the video, another one is that the inclined six cylinder engine eh, means that parallel. Alright. So oh sorry, not parallel in series, yeah. So this is where later on you will look at all of these mechanisms are in and it actually can be uh, can uh, be found in your car. Eh? Then we have red and pinion. The red and pinion. Where can you actually see or uh, why do you think the opinion is being used? Anyone? From the video? Any? Okay. The one is sprocket and chain. So sprocket and chain, uh, you can find it in your bicycle. The bicycle, you have the sprocket. Eh? Sprocket is the one that have the tooth. Lah. Okay, that one is sprocket. And then the chain is the one that is going to move. Because if you don't have the sprocket and chain, then there's no grip on the uh, sprocket eh? so that's why a sprocket engine is used in uh, in bicycle eh? and of course in your motorbike also uh, in your car it doesn't it, it's not using pulley but it's using timing belt eh? okay so this uh these are the few of example but we are going to go into detail later on so mechanism what is the definition of mechanism so mechanism is a system of rigid element this is one comprised of linkages lah, eh? linkages what is linkages so this is linkage okay one tube like this is one linkage eh? arranged and connected to transmit motion or force in a predetermined fashion so means that it's a motion converter it converts either from linear motion to rotary motion so it transmit motion or transmit force eh? so those are the main the main definition of mechanism okay so mechanism is a heart of machine which consists of linkages and joint 
is a for example engine mechanism so this is where i show to you the example of crank and slider eh? or in an engine it called crank crank shaft eh? crank shaft so if you saw the video just now in uh, in the beginning of the at eight just now i play the video of uh, the engine eh? the crank and shaft with the uh, camera follower eh? so it actually trans transform linear motion into rotary motion Okay, and also vice versa. Okay, at the beginning of the engine, when you start the, the car, what happens that this rod will start to move and okay? start to rotate. And what happens when it starts to rotate, this is going to rotate eh? and this slider, okay, connecting rod, this slider, we call it slider because it's moving in linear motion. So anything that moving in linear motion, you can either call it a slider also. Eh? So the slider will be moving up and down, up and down. So it's going to transmit or convert from rotary motion to the linear motion. Okay. So when you start your engine, what happens that it's going to rotate and this uh, slider will move up. Okay. At this point is that air is being sucked in into this compartment. Eh? Okay. And when it rotates again, it's going to push slider, going to push back, push up. And where the air will be going to compress, air and fuel lah, will going to compress here, and the spark plug will actually ignite and uh, burn. Means that uh, burn the fuel lah, means that uh, give uh, the energy will explode, not explode like an explosion, but explode inside this compartment. And what happened that explosion actually actually move the slider down again. So that is where uh, this definition is given, where it transforms linear motion into rotating motion. So the first initial point only is start to rotate. And after that, this linear motion actually give the rotation to this uh, uh, crank. Eh? Okay, it's going to move, right? So uh, converting linear to rotating motion. And based on this, this is where this road is actually crankshaft will be connected to your by gear lah, connected to your gears, uh, your uh, to gear and then to your uh, uh, car uh, the, the wheel shaft. Eh? So that's where your car can rotate. Right? So this is the basic idea behind the crankshaft, and this is example of crank and slider mechanism. Okay, so. The mechanism can still be used to provide suspension, so it either can have, you can either want it to make a force amplification, for example, uh, by le levels. Eh? So you want to use rack and pinion to actually improve the force. You can either change speed by gears, so you can either use uh, parallel gears, bevel gears, okay, or connected to the gears in parallel, and transfer of rotation. So it's either you want to transfer rotation, rotary to rotary, rotary linear, and so on. So example is finding belt is an example of rotary to rotary. And um, belt chain is also in rotary to rotary. Okay. So kinematics is actually uh, the study of motion with regard to forces. So but in, in this topic, you're not going to get about more on the kinematic. Later on, you will have a subject on uh, kinematic and dynamic. Okay. This is where you will learn about all of, of the all of the calculation of motion with got to force. Eh? So this is this subject is where the, the basic under, uh, fundamental understanding about all of the component in the computer. So uh, after this, each of the parts what you have learned in the topic in this chapter, you will learn in the sub sub topic, uh, sub sub subject in different subject. For example, component of control. Later on, you will learn in control one and control two. Component of and uh, uh, input signal, the data presentation, or the data amplification. So that one will be learned in signal system next semester. So these are the things that later on all the subject will be linked together. Eh? Okay, so what you are learning today, you are going to learn today mostly will be on the type of motion. Okay, so. There are two types of motion, so pure rotational motion type, which is electric motor or hand crank, or you have the pure translational type, which is pneumatic or hydraulic cylinder, which is, we call it as linear actuator, linear motion. So, 
rotation is all students understand that rotate and it's rotate with respect to one to a sharp so it's going to rotate pure translational or we call it pure linear the Li uh, linear uh, motion yeah? so what does it mean is that for translational motion you have x y axis here so uh, meaning that the movement which can be resolved into component along one or more axis so if okay, let me just take a pen if the so translation motion is that you have rotary to root uh, oh, sorry this one is not uh, correct uh, translation motion is that it resolves around components so you have this translation motion either in this rotation Okay, so this is what you mean by transfer motion. And then, uh, rotary motion will be something that rotate, uh, component rotate about one or more axis. So you have this one, you have x axis, we have uh, y axis here, you have z axis. So it means that rotating about one or more axis. So this one axis, so rotating about the axis. So this is what it means by rotation okay, along the axis. And this one is that, uh, Resolve along the, the axis means that is along the axis and moving along the axis. So we have four types. Actually, this one is not representing this translation. No, eh? it's actually um, different. So what I want to share is that there are four types of motion that you can actually apply for mechanism. The first one will be on the rotary to rotate. Means that, for example, just now is the back, uh, back, back drive, eh? back drive. Okay, and then. You have the translational to translational, means a linear to linear motion. You have the rotary to trans, uh, linear motion. And for what is that you have linear to rotary motion. So we will look to how to actually convert this motion using different mechanisms. Eh? So for the first one will be from rotary to rotary motion. Okay. So we have few options here. If you want to actually apply uh, uh, this uh, rotation, okay. And why you actually, oh, we already have the rotary motion. Why we need to actually to, to, to use the mechanism to convert it back to rotary motion. The okay. reason why is this one. Remember, you either want to have force amplification, you either want to have change the speed. So these are the two main things why you need the rotary to rotary uh, mechanism there. Eh? So uh, you can either use here you can either use linkages change drive and back drive so let's look at where are these components in this figure so for gears so gears is this one we have gears over here spur gear we have bevel gear we have worm gear okay so these are example of gear so bevel gear is something that if you see the gears is not particular like this but it's actually formed if i were to draw this in this uh, view so you will see that this gear is uh, seated like this okay 90 degree angle so this is what you mean by bevel gear perpendicular gear by 90 degree okay so you have this first gear you have this second gear a worm gear is something that you have the gear it's type like a worm because it's rotating like this this is going to uh, to rotate and it going to transfer the rotation from this rotation okay into this type of rotation okay? and also we have uh, the linkages so linkages is we have this type linkages this is for bonding okay? we have crank rocker type parallel type and we have a diff, um, another one is double crank uh, type so most of what oh, most of the time when you have the linkages eh, uh, if for gear these two parts will have will uh, will actually rotate okay? and of course we are going to fix it to a shaft over here eh? so this shaft is going to rotate uh, to fix and this shaft is going to uh, fix but for the linkages is that if you see at the end of the linkages mostly it will be fixed to the ground or some at some uh, parts lah, okay it's going to be fixed means that the thing the link is the only part that going to be rotating so you can see that this is connected the, the rod is connected to this uh, end part and this 
point and this point is going to rotate depending on this motion. Okay, so it's going either to rotate here and rotate there. And similar to this one, because of the way it's being set up, so it's going to give a different rotation. And next is change drive. So change drive is something that you have here. Change drive, pulley, bed, pulley, uh, pulley belt. Eh? And um, if you see here, friction roller, non-circular gears, or general wheels, okay? So these friction rollers, uh, we can call it as bearings, bearings, ball bearings or bearings. So you have two balls with this, which is, does not have any teeth. It's going to actually move with each other. So uh, either way, if you have two roller pairs, normally you need to make sure that uh, the, the, the designer or the engineer need to make sure that it's, it doesn't have uh, high friction. So it needs to have low friction. If it have high friction, then um, oh, sorry, for the roller pair, you need to have high friction because if you have no friction, that is not going to move, it's not going to grip with each other. So, uh, if it doesn't grip, then it cannot actually move the other end. Okay. Second part, we go to the translational to translation, or we call it as uh, converting from linear to linear motion. So, there are two ways. You can either use cam and follower, okay, or linkages, okay. So cam and follower that I have shared in the uh, in the engine is different type of cam and follower. That cam and follower is actually rotary linear, okay. But we also have cam and follower in types of traction, uh, linear to linear motion. For, for example, we have this cam. If this cam is going to move up and down like this. And it's going to move up and down depending on this um, this fixed part. Eh? So you can see that this part is being fixed here. Okay. So what happens that this uh, roller okay, is going to move in this motion. And when it moves in this motion, that is going to have this angle and at this displacement. This, this eh? And when it starts to move to this part, it's going to have a larger displacement. And if you draw this, you will get actually a displacement like this, the graph. Eh? So displacement, because from here to here, and of course, in the end here, you imagine that you will connect it to a sensor, yeah, a displacement sensor. So this is where you can actually read the movement. Eh? Okay. And this is type of wedge cam follower. Here, which one follow, follow means that it's not a straight line. So perpendicular means that you have an angle. Uh, it's either 90 degree or at a, uh, at a, at a specific angle. Perpendicular, a wedge cam is something that you have a, a slope there. Eh? A wedge cam. Okay. And you have a wedge cam follower also in speed position means that the, the cam here, okay, is actually sloped with an angle. Okay, so, uh, and linkages is something that we have here. Uh, this is type of linkages that you have because if once you have something that is connected like this, then we call this as linkages. Eh? So, linkages, if you move, imagine that if you move this block upward, what happens is that this block will be being pulled over to the right side. Eh? So, it's going to rotate up here and rotate in this motion. So, imagine that this is x axis. It's going to transfer the motion to the y-axis. And similar to this concept is that you have the double slider but in, in screw position. Okay. Third one would be the rotational to translation motion. Means that from rotary to linear motion. So you can have the cam, okay, cam and follow, the one example I gave you for the engine. We have the linkages also. You can do that with of, of course with specific uh with specific sequence la, or the setup and rack and pinion okay so rack and pinion is something that we have similar to, it looks like a gear over here okay so where is the rack where is the pinion so this what this we call as the rack eh? this is the pinion so rack is something that is going to move in the linear position and the pinion is going to drive it 
Okay, so imagine that this uh, pinion, okay, you have a shaft connected to a motor. Yeah, motor. The motor will rotate and when it rotate, it will actually rotate the pinion and this pinion will drive the uh, rack to slide left and right. Okay, so this is what we call as rack and pinion. And we have also a screw mechanism. Screw mechanism like this, we call it as a ball screw mechanism. Okay, ball screw mechanism. Eh? Okay, why is called a ball screw mechanism? Because if you see this one, it looks like a screw. Okay, and the ball screw is where this ball will actually be rotated. So when you rotate, it will actually move this. Uh, mechanism eh, table. Okay. And next one is the cam and follower. So the cam and follow is similar to what you have in the engine where it will actually open the valve and eh, open and close the valve, in the valve for the air and open the valve for the exhaust uh, air. Okay. So cam and follow is example of that one in the engine. And then we have also the slider and crank. So you see that you can actually use it for the rotation to translation also. Reason why because of the setup that is being done here. So you see that the setup here, you are connected to this uh, rod and uh, link pages is connected to this uh, point. Eh? And this point is can actually move in this setup. Okay. And because of the way you set this up, this is actually loose. Eh? Maybe there's a guiding system for this mask, so it's going to move it in linear. Okay, so when this rotate, this will actually move in linear motion. Next, we have the six bar dual linkages. So this is about dual linkages. is something that you have in the simulator for uh, airplane simulator. If anyone right on an airplane simulator, mass airplane simulator? Anyone? The real simulator? For example, if you, your, your, you play video game and eh? this is some simulator that when you play video game it will actually move with you okay if you go to the uh, video game center i think last time like, during my my younger age eh, there was some simulator that when you write it you actually move with what uh, what uh, the, with the the view that you are in eh? so that simulator is actually using this concept okay it's going to rotate Imagine that it's going to rotate and it's going to actually move you up and down. So the simulator for mass airplane have the similar concept because it's going to move and um, simulate the vibration or the turbulence in an airplane. Eh, turbulence, okay, turbulence. So this this plate platform will actually move around. Yeah, yeah I have I've been on as uh, the the mass simulator, eh, so it's a kind of horror juga lah. Actually, even though it's in a simulator, but inside the cockpit, it's actually look real. And you have the simulator, it looks very real. When you actually um, held on the throttle, eh, we were testing on the landing. Eh. And the landing the landing was really bad because we crashed onto the ground, eh, the landing. So when we crashed, eh, it's, it's like... They, uh, they, uh, the, the pilot actually they, he off the the motor vibration eh? <laughs> means that there's a motor over here right the vibration motor okay connected to motor so means that if the simulator crash land actually for a simulator it will actually give the real response means that it's going you will feel a vibration very bad lah means that you're going to die in that simulator the feeling is like that eh? but because of um we were trying to test it in out, so um, they heat off the, the vibration motor because I think uh, some people will get a heart attack if they were in the simulator, eh? if the simulator crash land. Eh? So uh, it's a good experience if you get to uh, to follow that, eh? to, to actually try it out, but it's actually quite expensive because I was on a, a family day at that time, so um, not not Newton family, but my 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 husband's uh, badge, eh? they have a family, so uh, we have the simulator, I mean, we, we write the simulator, so in the simulator only can fit 3%, 3% in the cockpit, because it's a real cockpit, eh? 
Yeah, okay, third one is the parallel cam follower. So same thing, we have a parallel cam follower. The concept will be the same, similar as this one eh? Okay, hey, but I'm not going to focus on the cylindrical type cam follower, but more on this type. Eh? This type. Okay, so uh, all right, this one application of multiple mechanism. I think you can go through. I I will actually share this later on towards the end of the class. Eh? Okay, I forgot to let me just. Let me just remove that slide because this one should actually not be in that part. Yeah. No problem, no problem. No problem. No problem with that. Just wait. Okay. Right, uh, let me see. Okay, there are multiple uh, mechanisms. Okay, I will. I think uh, this one actually the link is uh, wrong. Yeah? I, I actually copied the same link with this one. But anyway, if I were to show you this, uh, this link. Okay, if you open this link, I'll share to you one uh, YouTuber. Eh? He's sharing uh, quite interesting. Eh? Uh, he's doing the simulation using AutoCAD or, uh, or uh, SolidWorks. Eh? So if you see a lot of mechanism that he shared, so you can look at an example that, uh, example, eh, I will, uh, let me see what type of example. Okay, this one, eh? slider and crank. Eh? So if you look, Look at how the motion is done. Eh? So this is an example of slider and crank. So we have the slider here. Slide is going to slide along this. So how it actually slides because you have the guide here. This one is actually the guide, the end here. So there's the guide. Without the guide, the slider would not move that in that linear position. Eh? So you need to have that guide this guide this one okay so because of this okay this one is another setup okay uh, means that the, the, the other option that you can actually do and this one is actually to move it in a different way so both setup is going to actually move the uh, mechanism in from both linear. Okay? so you can go through this i think uh quite a, a good quite a few numbers of the videos that uh and i have shared to you come shop how it works and so on but anyway i will i'll go through the slide first eh? so let's look at the types of mechanism that you have okay eh? so you have the kinematic change combination of lanes and eh? camp follower gear scratch and fall back drive and the rings eh? so all of these things okay um uh, you can read through lah. so what is it for for example, kinematic change is combination of links, degree of freedom is the number of motion needed for motion. Eh? Oh, sorry, the tingle motion is for motion. Eh? Okay, for gears, gears transfer and transform rotation motion. And is gear is preferred for small distance power. So normally, if you see, sometimes people use gear, sometimes people use bad drive. So why the reason, uh, if you have gear, why you still need bad drive? Because it's going to translate between uh with, between rotary to rotary okay reason why gears is normally used for uh, for close distance for example in your bicycle you have a gear to each other so you do not need a bad drive okay if you have a bad drive that is going to actually uh you have a loss in energy because of the drop but in a car you cannot have a gear in a car okay uh for the engine if you rotate the, 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 the wheel, so you use a back 
uh, standing back, eh, standing back to actually move the wheel. Eh. So that is where you move uh, the, the, the engine will actually rotate the shaft. Eh. Yeah. So you just go through this one. So let's go to the first one. Which, uh, uh, let's go to the explanation of degree degree of freedom. Eh. Degree of freedom is number of components of motion that are required in order to generate motion. So example just now I showed you the example of slider and crank. Eh. So figure this first figure shows the joint with only one transnational trans degree of freedom. It means that it's going to move in one direction. So when one direction means that it's one degree of freedom. So if you have two motion, example, this one is going to move in linear and you have another end effector here is going to rotate. Okay. So this what we call as two degree of freedom. Okay, so these are the main components. But normally uh, in robotics, yeah, you normally have six degree of freedom, eh? lots of degree of freedom. Eh? So let's look at the first one, which, which is uh, the linkages. The linkages. So this example of crankshaft just now I showed you, but we go by parts. Eh? So linkages, or we call it as the thematic chains, is each part of, the, of a mechanism which has motion relative to some other parts in terms of link. So it means that we have a link that in between and it's connected to that part uh, by one point. Eh? So a rigid body which has two or more points or attachment to other call is the, it, it is it determine uh, is the using the term knots. Eh? So if you see here this is a link. Okay. And you see that there's a hole at the end here. So we call that as a node where that's the point where it's going to rotate. So each link is capable of moving relative to each neighboring link. Okay. A joint is connected between the connected link and the nodes, which allows some motion. So at this link here, okay, a joint will be connected here. So that joint will actually be the one movement. So for example, your elbow, eh, if you're going to develop, develop a robotic arm, eh, so you have the link, eh, your link, this one link, another link. So you have the joint here. So the joint is the one that connecting the link. Okay. So example is lever, crank, connecting rods and pistons, slider, pulley, belts. So all of those have links, eh? okay. and and the joints. So cumulative chains is a sequence of rod joint and links. So example here is the simple engine mechanism. So we have the crankshaft and we have the slider. So I just go through uh, because I explained just now about the so the design of many mechanisms are based on two basic form of kinematic chains. So two main things. So it's either four bar chain or four bar link or sliding crank chain. Yeah? So sliding crank chain uh crank chain is normally uh, to convert from rotary to linear and four bar chain can actually convert from linear to linear or linear to rotary or rotary to linear. So this one, um, I think I already explained just now, so I just skip. Okay. So this one is the front view, and this one is the side view. Yeah? Side view. So if you see here, is that which one is fixed? Which one is fixed? Number three. Number three. Okay, good. Number three is fixed. Eh? Number three is actually the shaft. Eh? The shaft is connected to some uh, to the block over here, so it's going to be the one that fixed. Uh, one is actually the crank shaft. Uh, circle that. So the crank shaft is going to rotate across uh, the shaft there. Eh? So going to rotate, and because the crank shaft is connected to this link, okay, by a joint near this joint. So, and it's connected, the joint here is connected to the cylinder. So, what happens that when it's rotated, it's going to move the slider up and down. And if you see to the right side over here, eh, um, at the right side, you see that, oh, the slider is, how can the slider move up and down? Okay, as mentioned just now in the video, okay, you need to have a guide to guide the eh, mechanism. So, where is the guide? So, this is actually the guide. 
Okay, so sekejap. Okay, the cylinder, the cylinder is the guide for the cylinder, uh, sorry, not the cylinder. The slide, uh, this, okay, the cylinder of the engine, okay, is the guide for the slider moving up and down. Okay. This is cylinder, imagine that you have a cylinder. And this is, of course, this whole thing is inside here, eh? okay? So, this cylinder will be the guiding system for the slider to move up and down, eh? okay? So, hopefully you can imagine this figure, lah, because I think most of you are already taking, taken the AutoCAD, yeah? Have you taken AutoCAD? AutoCAD, uh, the 2D and 3D? Have you yeah. Okay. Yes. Eh? So if you are taking AutoCAD, I'm sure you can imagine this diagram perfectly. Yeah. Because AutoCAD, you you have to understand the front view, the side view, the top view, the 3D view, right? So this is where AutoCAD you are going to apply that knowledge or skill of AutoCAD into this subject. Eh? And uh, okay, this one is example of slider climbing chain. And we have the four bar chain. So four bar chain is like what I explained just now. Four bar chain is where you have okay the end of this point. For example, this joint and this joint is going to be fixed. Okay, and this one is also going to be fixed, going to be fixed, and it's going to be fixed. So the first one, the second one, and the third one. Okay, for this first one. Is going to actually uh, transfer rotation from rotary to rotary, right? So this one is going to be fixed and it's going to rotate apart this axis, eh? So it's going to rotate. And for level cramp mechanism, is that where this link over here is actually connected to this joint and is connected to a crank. Crank shaft, jadi, jadi. Crank shaft. Just imagine that just now. We have the crankshaft, eh? this crankshaft, eh? okay? So it's similar. You have this crankshaft. So this point is actually uh, joined together. So what happened is that when this crankshaft move, rotate along this form, then it's going to give a motion to this point. Eh? So you're going to go left, and right, left, and right. And for the third category will be where you have both side okay this one is the uh, fix both side you have the crank you have the crank eh? crank shaft eh? so it's going to be fixed here and fixed here it means that it's going to rotate it is able to go, rotate full degree eh? and this one an example of four bench another example of four bar chains where if you see here, okay, you have this crankshaft connected to a link. Okay, so with that, which one is the second, eh? second one, level crank mechanism. So this level crank mechanism, when it rotate, what happens is that it's going to, this is what, eh? what is this? What mechanism do you think it is, is this? What mechanism, eh? Pernah nampak tak mechanism? Do you know, um, the English term I do not know but piring hitam eh, piring hitam last time eh. Or you can say uh, in uh, our disk drive eh, disk drive. This drive is actually using this mechanism to read, read and write. Okay, so what happened is that when this move, you take, this one, this, because of this, is going to rotate left and right. It's this lever here will actually move left and right. Or you can actually uh, move it upward. Okay, so this is a film. Lah. It's going to read and write or play the, play the video or play the sound. Okay? So this is where it will read whatever, uh, whatever that you have. Uh, Save in, on top of the film. Eh? So it's going to, um, if you see here, it pull it forward for releasing and move up and back to lock. 
treatment. Okay, so the mechanism used in a film. Okay, and this one is an example of a bachin for toggle position. So toggle position is where, um, if you see here, let me just see. Yeah. It's being used in a tailgate of a truck. Okay, tailgate of a truck. So if you imagine that uh, this word, this is a truck. This is a head body of the truck. You have the wheel over here. Okay. Sorry, my I, my my drawing is really bad. Eh? So this is truck. Okay. So you have the truck body here. So what happens that this one is the fixed part. Okay. And it's connected to using a four bar link. So you can actually. Uh, Put a motor over here, and the motor will actually rise it either this at zero degree angle or to the maximum ninety degree angle. Okay. So slider crank mechanism. I think I already explained just now, so I just skip this one. So concept is the same. You have the slider and crank. So you have the slider moving in translational, and you have the crank moving in. Uh, rotary, eh? Okay, same thing. So uh, I'm just going to skip that. Right. So example of this slider and crank mechanism in an engine. So I will just show one video. Eh? Mm -hmm. Stop. Stop sharing. Okay, sorry. Stop sharing. Okay, let's look at the video. Have you ever wondered what happens when you turn the key inside your car ignition? In this simple video, we will explain all the steps involved in this process, from the ignition to the operation of the internal combustion engine. Please. Yes. Uh, we can see the video. Oh, it's not see. play on the screen. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, I forgot to share the share the uh webex. Eh? Okay, okay, sorry. Okay. okay. All right. So from the video, please determine what type of mechanism that you can actually find. Eh, that is in the this uh engine. Eh, what is number? Yes. 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 We will explain all the steps involved in this process, from the ignition to the operation of the internal combustion engine. When you first get in your car, the first thing you do after putting the seatbelts on is to insert the key in the ignition switch to start the engine. When the switch is turned on, the electric circuit between the battery and the starter motor is closed. The starter motor is an important element for the starting system. It allows the engine to reach the proper RPMs so as to initiate the engine's operation under its own power. The starter motor essentially transforms the electrical energy into mechanical energy. The starter motor is coupled to the flywheel, which in turn provides to transmit the motion to the crankshaft. Now, the combustion cycle takes place inside the engine cylinders. So, the starter motor is disconnected. Now, let's see what happens inside the engine, taking the example of a common four-stroke engine. Okay, four-stroke engine is that means that it has four cylinder, eh? Okay, four cylinder. A four-stroke engine, it represents an example of efficiency and perfect synchronization. It converts the explosions that occur inside its combustion chambers into motion. The aim of this engine is to use this energy to provide movement and transfer it to the wheels so that the vehicle can move. This is where you transfer it. all it takes place it. inside the cylinder. Here, we can find the combustion chamber where the explosions occur. The cylinder is basically the space through which the piston travels. The purpose of the piston is to transfer force from expanding gas in the cylinder to the crankshaft via a piston rod or a connecting rod, so that the back and forth linear motion of the pistons is transformed into a circular motion which can power the wheels. But let's see this process more in detail by disassembling the engine. The term four stroke is referring to the cycle of engine operation which requires four strokes of the piston. First stroke, intake. 
The valve must be in the open position while the piston pulls an air-fuel mixture into the cylinder by producing vacuum pressure through its downward motion. The air-fuel ratio is generally about 14.7 to 1. That's because fuel cannot ignite alone. It is the oxygen in the air, in fact, that provides the combustion of the fuel. What happens now that the air-fuel mixture is inside the cylinder? Second stroke, compression. During this stage, both the intake and exhaust valves are closed, and the piston moves up the chamber to the top. This causes the compression of the fuel-air mixture, which decreases 10 times its volume. At this point, pressure rises drastically as the air and fuel molecules are compressed together, colliding with each other and increasing the temperature. Now we are ready for the explosion. Third stroke, combustion and expansion. At the top of the compression stroke, the spark plug fires, igniting the compressed air-fuel mixture. This causes an explosion. As the fuel burns, it expands, increasing the pressure inside the cylinder and driving the piston downward, moving the twist that rotates the crankshaft, which will convert the energy of the explosion into rotary motion. Now, let's see the fourth and final stroke, which is called exhaust. During the exhaust stroke, the piston once again returns to the top while the exhaust valve is open. This action expels the spent air-fuel mixture through the exhaust valve. The four-stroke cycle is complete, but it does not stop here. At a speed of 6,000 RPM, it repeats up to 50 times per second, causing 200 explosions per second inside each cylinder of this four-stroke engine. More than 10 years in industrial... Right, so... What type of mechanism that you can see just now? What type of mechanism? Guys? Guys? Slider crank. Slider and crank and then? Other? Any other? Other? Any other mechanism that you can see? Rotation, rotation to uh, rot, yeah. rotary to linear, is it right? Rotary to linear, okay. That one is the motion, okay. Uh, the first one that you can see is that at the start up eh, yeah. of the engine, what happened was that the engine start to rotate uh, according to RPM. For example, if the car is having to start up for 6,000 RPM, so the, the motor, the initial, will start to rotate at 6,000 RPM. So that is where it start to actually move the slider up. Eh? So once it's uh, doing the combustion process more, so it's going to push the motion down. So that is where it won't, it's going to convert from linear to rotary motion and vice versa. Lah. So until you stop the engine. So, Okay, so it has two types of motion, eh? Right? In the engine, it's either from linear to rotary and linear rotary to linear, eh? And actually, there is another mechanism inside there, but uh, I, but maybe you didn't catch it, eh? It's actually uh, the cap and follower. Cap and follower. We have the cap and follower inside there. But because I didn't uh, reach until there, so maybe you cannot differentiate which part was the cap and follower. Eh? So anyway, um, it's okay. I'm going to, uh, to go next. Okay, so let's go next. Okay, this one is just example of the video. So just go through, look at the example. So um, uh, identify which part is the linkages, which part is the joints, and actually what happened when you move one part, eh? So, I think five first one is that which one is a fixed point, which one is the moving point, and which actually, what motion actually that you want to, to, to have for the, the different type of uh, linkages. As for example, for cam, cam crusher, so what type of motion, we need to rotary and so on. Eh? So, just go through because I have sh um, shared a lot of examples. So, go through, we have the cam crusher, simple press, rear window wiper, okay, 
we have the move packages from SMB bench to conveyor. So just try to look at which part is actually moving, which part is actually fixed. And what actually motion that you want to achieve? Is it from rotary to linear or linear to rotary? Eh? And this one is an example of lift platform. Eh? Um, this one is an example of moving carrier. Uh, this one is an example of lift platform in uh, in the trunk. Eh? The front loader, eh? device to close the top flap of the box. If you have a stair clamping mechanism, eh? a box that turns itself off. For example, the music box. Eh? Then we have a more complicated one for the uh, landing gear mechanism for linkages. The then rowing machine, those who are doing exercises. So maybe you have actually right on one rowing machine. Eh? So if you have a rowing machine at home, so look at that rowing machine. What are the linkages that you have? Which one slide, which one is rotated and so on. Eh? Okay, um, another one is this example. A bit of so this one is like uh, to move the position of this one and the seat. Eh? Okay, this is more detail uh, on the robotic arm eh, for, uh, on prosthetic knee mechanism. So which one is the moving part? Which one is what part actually you want to uh, rotate? Eh? Right, so let's go to the second one, which is CAM. Okay, CAM and follow. So CAMs is normally we, we can see in the normal type is in engine. Or we can see it in zoom machine and let the machine eh? So can actually uh, consist of the cam itself, the one that is going to rotate, and you have the follower. It's similar. It looks similar to the slider, slider and cramp, crank mechanism. Eh? But slider and cramp mechanism, we have the linkages which is connected to both the slider and the crank and eh? shaft. But for cam is that it's not connected indirectly, but it's going to touch. Okay, you can see that this cam is touched with this follower, right? So when this cam rotate, then this follower will move up and down, right? So cam is a body which rotate or oscillate, and in doing so, impart a reciprocal motion to a second body called follower. So, macam yang I explained tadi lah, cam is going to rotate and it impart the second part, which is the follower, to move in linear motion. So, um, we divide into three parts eh, for the camp. We call it as the fall, rise, and wheel. So, part that the part that lowers the follower, its profile determines how quickly the camp follower will fall. So, imagine that when you actually, uh, the camp is actually rotated in this position. Okay, this is camp right now. Eh? So, imagine that it's rotated in this okay position and then you have the follower is going to move down sorry my good drawing i'm using the mouse eh? so the follower actually move up and down okay based on rotation of the cap okay so so means that the important one is how what the, 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 the shape of the cam is really important. Eh? So, shape of the cam determine the motion of the follower. So, you can see later on why uh, in the engine car, the cam and follower have a specific design. The cam have a specific shape. Eh? This because you want to imagine that just now. Okay? At one point, one second point, at this point, for example, the motion of the uh, cam and follower at this point, so you need to slope. At this point, you want the valve to open for one second. For example, this is a zero second, this four second, five second. So one second open very fast. Or oh, zero point one one second it opens. So at this peak, the valve will open and after that it will close. Okay? So it means that how actually to make this motion using Cap and follow. So let's look at how it's going to be used uh, to, be, to make the motion. Eh? So, uh, but before that, let's look at the type of cam that you can use. The cam, uh, different type of cam and follower. So we have the point, knife, and roller here. So point means that you have the uh, follower is in terms of a point, knife. Uh, that is actually very, uh, very pointy. And then roller, you have a roller type. So 
of course uh, normally uh, in uh, but not in the in the engine lah, but roller normally it's used for production and manufacturing production eh? so it's using this one because it has lower friction because easy to maintain eh? compared if you have the point or knife of course you can use point and knife in the hammer okay, follower but you need to make sure that it uh, this the the contact between the the cap and follower has low friction. Okay, low friction means that the material need to be having a low friction surface friction. And let's see so that we have the slider and oscillating flat and mushroom type. Okay? So normally, if user they normally want a point type or knife type, they will go for the flat type because it's more more cheaper and easier to and cheaper and easier to actually fabricate. Eh? So this one, if you later on eh, for IDP project or even for uh, PSM project, eh, you can actually make your own cap and follower. Eh? You can use 3D printer. 3D printer to print out this uh, cam and print out the follower and just attach the motor to this shaft. Then you can actually rotate the cap and look at the positioning. Okay, so this example where you can use these devices. Eh? So how to actually make a motion out of this cam and follower? Okay, the cam shape required to produce a particular motion of the will depend on the shape of the cap and type of follower use. Okay? So um, shape of the cam is this, this one is the cam, eh? the one here, you see here. So if you see here, the radius is not the same. If you have this radius is much more larger than this part. Eh? So it has a specific shape. So this specific shape actually will give the this motion. Eh? We see here it give a single harmonic motion means that at this one it's going to have a peak motion, and it means that every time it moves it's going to rotate. So you can just look at this graph and find out. Oh, okay, this one at one hundred eighty degree. Actually, you can look here is that at the point where the radius is the maximum point. Okay, and for the lowest peak is that. You have the point where you have the radius is at the smallest radius. So therefore, you can get this type of waveform of motion. Eh? So um, the commonly used type of cam okay, that we have is the heart shaped cam. Okay, it looks like a heart because it's just like this. Okay, and you have the pear pear shaped type. So pear shaped type is look like a pear lah. It's not circle, eh? Z circle. It has it has a distinguished uh design. So normally this pair type shape, you use it in the engine, okay? In engine, with the way that you inject the uh the the the, the spark plug and the spark plug where is in going to inject at that point is going to open the valve, eh? So this is where you will open the method to open the valve at this point, eh? Okay. So. If you see the characteristic is different and depending on the shape of the cap. So you have here is that it's going to increase constantly at one specific rate and reduce constantly. And this one is that you have a exponential slope and then it will decrease exponentially. Right? Okay, so back again to the video just now. So where was the cam and cam and uh, shark uh, cam and follower? Post and the piston moves up the chamber generally about first from the combustion chamber where the maybe this video not so good. This one I have shared you in YouTube juga eh. I will share you in YouTube. Okay, this one eh. This, so this section examines camshafts and drives. The position of the camshaft depends on the design of the engine. It can be in the engine block, close to the crankshaft. This is called a pushrod or overhead valve system. Or there can be one or two camshafts mounted in the cylinder head. But in both designs, it does much the same job. 
driving the valves and the distributor, and sometimes the fuel pump and the oil pump. The camshaft is made of hardenable iron alloy or steel, and it can be cast or machined. The cam loads are ground to the proper shipping surfaces and the timing can vary. adjusters, a tightening ramp is built into the shape of the cam. This makes for quieter operation during the opening of the valve. Alright, so we're not going to uh, show full. So basically, try, uh, cam and follower is used to open and close the valve eh, in the engine. Eh? Okay. So let's go next. Next, okay, the gear. So gear, so gear train is something that you have a mechanism which our body use to transfer and transform rotational motion. Eh? So just now you can either connect it in linear like that or in, a, in an angle. Eh? So in, an angle is called as a bevel gear. So we have one up here. The bevel gear is specific gear. This is a more specific gear. Normal gear is we, we have the normal gear train, but this one is specific. So we have the warm gear set, level gear, and trench gear set. So later on, please go through the video that I showed you in the PowerPoint slide and also in Telegram. Because one of, one of the video contains the planetary gear set, eh, where you planetary gear set, set is used in a uh, steering wheel, a uh, steering wheel control. Eh, is that if you are normally uh, right now uh, in in previous uh, cars, eh, most cars are using the hydraulic system, eh, steering wheel system. But nowadays, they are using the electrical system. So it means that you have the motor to actually uh, control the steering. That's why the steering is very light. Okay, so in order to control that, to actually to connect the motor to the steering wheel system, they are using the planetary gear, gear set. Okay, so you refer to the video. Eh, okay? So I'm not going to explain that, but look at the video and see how it's uh, it's like rotating. Eh? So for the rotary motion is that you have the two is or either you have a rot rolling cylinder. So but for rolling cylinder is that the possibility of slip is very high, and it depends on friction force between contact surface. So it means that if friction is um friction is low, then it can actually cannot roll. Eh? cannot move it. Okay, if this is rolling and because of friction is very low, that this one will move, move will, not, will not move. So therefore, that's why we have the gear type two mesh gear. So this one actually will prevent slip, eh? prevent slip by using mesh teeth. So we, for gear A and B, we have the teeth, and this one is just a simple idea how to actually calculate for the gear ratio. So, uh, how to calculate the gear ratio is that you have the uh, number of teeth on B over number of teeth of A. So I think this one you can do a simple calculation. So what is the gear ratio? Okay. And there are sometimes uh, gears that you can actually um, uh, put uh, organize it in series, series of internal mesh gears. So you have a driver, idler, and driven. So it's going to move uh, in the same clockwise position. Eh? So you have the position uh, in the uh, clockwise position, and in the end you have C in the clockwise position. So this is a C. Gear train. 
And also you have types of the, uh, compound gear train. Eh? So compound gear train is where two wheels are mounted under common truck. So what does it mean that you have a uh, gear? You have A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D is gears. And B and C is actually mounted at the same similar shaft. So this is what means by compound gear train. Eh? So you can uh, go through and look at how to calculate for the, um, the gear ratio here. Eh? And uh, also another type of gear type, we call it as gear trap, is the red and pinion. So where grip, red and pinion is uh, two intermeshed gear having basic circular equilibrium means, means that it have uh, one gear is having the uh, rotation and one more which is the pinion okay uh, for, sorry for the rack it ha also have the teeth that so therefore you have the rack and pinion i'm not sure if this one can play cannot play so um uh, rack and pinion yeah. You can look it in the in the YouTube juga lah, but uh, because I have the video, so I'm going to show it here. Okay, this is example of rack and pinion. Eh? So you have the rack here moving upward, linear because it's connected in a uh, in a such a way that you have the both position. Okay, eh? so you can either have one part only. You have one rack, one uh, rotary motion, and linear. Eh? So we call that as this one is dual rack and pinion. Eh? Okay. Um, right. The next is Rachel and Paul. It's also a type of Gearing because it has a teeth over here. So, uh, that ratchet and mechanism. Have you seen this before? Anyone? This one you can buy at the uh, thing at the hardware store. Eh? Hardware store. This one is actually my at home. So, have you seen this before? What is the use for uh, ratchet mechanism? Anyone? Okay, ratchet mechanism is to lock a mechanism where it is holding a load. Okay, so you have the ratchet over here, it's look like the, the gearing, and you have the pole here. So let's look at how it moves. Okay. This is a ratcheting PVC cutter. It's great for cutting pipe. To open up the PVC cutter, you pull it apart like this. You'll notice all these different teeth. That's the ratcheting portion of the tool. Notice that when I squeeze it, the blade only goes so far. And I release very gently with my hand until this next tooth engages. It engages and I squeeze. The blade moves a little bit farther. I release until the tool engages. I squeeze. The blade moves farther. I release so it becomes like a kind of a pumping action on how this ratcheting tool works. So I'm going to open it up again. I'm going to stick my PVC pipe in. I call this the saddle. You always want to make sure that the blade is on top. Oh, and you also make, have to make sure that you release the lock here. So I'm going to squeeze. If you have small hands, you can put these two hands together. Notice that it only goes that far. I've closed it all the way. And I'm going to release it until the next tooth engages. I'm going to squeeze it again so it hasn't gone all the way through. I'm so going to release going to again until the next tooth engages. And squeeze again. And then it's cut. Right. So this is how the ratchet mechanism eh, uh, works. Eh? Okay, next is belt and drive chain drive uh belt and chain drive. So uh I think this one is straightforward lah. For belt and chain drive it's have similar uh, but for belt drive you have the tooth, eh? So belt drive is actually you have the uh, the the belt which is you have the top one is called as a tight and the low part is a slack. Eh? So normally for the belt and drive we need to um, do the alignment 
correctly, eh? you need to make it in parallel like this, in series like this. You cannot actually uh, assemble it with this type of, if not, it will be having a misalignment. So this is example how you actually connect the uh, back drive chain. You have the motor here, you connect to the, the, the another uh, drive system here, and it's connected to some, some activities or some processes. So um, the disadvantage of using back drive is that if you see here, okay, the slip can occur. So what does it mean by slip? Slip means that the belt will come off from this uh, pulley eh, okay, because of uh, the fast rotation. So sometimes it will come off. So this one is the advantage of using belt drive. Okay? And it's going to try, it's similar to gear. It can transmit power to increase the torque or reduce the torque depending on what size is the pulley type. one uh, how to play for top A and B. Okay. So there are four main type of back drive you see here. You have the round type, A belt, B belt, flat belt and tooth belt. So flat belt is something like this. You see that the belt is flat. Round type you have something wrong like this. So it means that you have a groove over here. Okay. And V shape is you have the V groove. Eh? So it's more it's preventing the slip happen. So if you have something like this like this type that belt, you will have slip most of the time, eh? but if you have B type, it will actually uh, reduce the uh, slipping. But then, eh, but however, because of the groove, it will actually be less efficient because of the friction. Okay, and next if we have the timing belt. Timing belt is like this. So timing belt normally you can see it in the uh, car engine. Eh? Timing belt they are using timing jet timing belt to connect the engine shaft tadi just now. Connect it to the wheel base and eh? wheel connect so that it rotates. So you have the tiny belt. Okay. And next is that you have the chain drive. So chain drive is what you see in motorbike or bicycle. Okay. So chain type. Eh? Right. So uh, I think you just go through this one. And we have the forward. The drive can be uh, moving in forward motion or reverse motion. So how do you actually, for forward motion is direct. Eh? You have two uh, pulley. So when you rotate B, A will rotate in the same, same motion, eh? same clockwise motion. But for reversing drive is that you're going to have this type of category. Okay, you have A and B is going to have a cross, cross type belt like this. Okay, or you can actually put it in this type. So when you have you rotate B, what happens is that A will rotate. But if you see for both type of um, uh, setup, okay, both side of the belt comes into contact with the wheel. So the V belt or timing belt kind of view. So what does it mean is that if if you have this timing belt, eh, so for the case of the, the forward motion, it's only the inner part will contact with the pulley. But for the reverse drive, if you notice that the inner part of this will contact with the pulley, and when it when it goes in out here, the inner part, the outer part will actually contact with uh, pulley B. So it means that both sides, up and down, is actually in contact with the pulley. So for this case is that for the reverse driving, V belt and tanning belt is not suitable. Eh? Okay. And lastly is the bearing. Eh? So bearings is something that is important to me. Okay. So you have ball bearing inside here. So uh, where you use this mechanism is that in ball, ball bearing mechanism and where you, have, you want to have a linear motion. Eh? Okay. Then you just go through this one. Okay, types of bearings semua. Uh, what I'm going to share is the example of video for the ball bearing. Ibula. Um, Oh, this, one, eh? this video is about different peaks for the Z has 12 buildings inside the engine now. The machine side of the carriage okay. and a Long. plate with machine screws ties the teeth.
nut and our M5 screw. At this Okay, this one. Eh? Alright, so this is an uh, example of a ball screw mechanism. Eh? So you can see that there's a ball screw inside here. And what happened is that uh, you have the screw. Eh? It's like a warm gear, lah, but you have the ball bearing is moving inside. So what happened when the screw, this screw and here, is connected. Imagine that it's connected to a motor. So the motor will going to rotate. What happened is that when it rotate, this slider we call it is going to move left and right okay depending on this uh, rotation okay so it's going to convert from rotary to linear motion so um, this is where uh, it's a high end uh, uh, linkages uh, uh, if you buy it's quite kind of uh, it's expensive eh? okay so um good job Alright, so group discussion. This one, uh, this one was previously when I teach uh, in face to face, eh? but anyway, uh, no need to do group discussion. And eh? this one just do it individually. Okay, I have given you, I think, roughly about seven, seven example of a system, eh? okay, application of mechanism. So what you want, you should do is that list and explain the type of mechanism and actuator used in the system. Okay, so. Go through the system, find out what type of mechanism used. Is it linkages? Is it gearing? Is it like an opinion? Is it a slider and clamp mechanism? So go through one by one and look at what type of mechanism. And uh, other than that, also include what type of actuator it is used. Okay? If you can see this, if there is an actuator, then you can list out there's an actuator. Example like this, you have the actuator. So find out that one. Okay, I, later on in unit, I'm going to open a submission for the task. I mean, because if I don't do the... Sorry. I think the video is on. <laughs> sorry, sorry. The video is on. Okay, so if I... Um, okay, later on, I just ask you guys, lah, do you want to submit this task? C1 until... This one exercise. Okay, the feedback form is different, eh? I open to you guys. Do you want to submit this task? If you submit, it will be helpful for you for my exam. If you don't submit, then it's up to you to do it on your own. Okay, so let's look at the chat. Do you want to submit or not? Don't want to submit? Hello? You want to submit? Yes or no? Okay, I have example until the exercise. Eh? This one exercise is simple. You have two pulley over here. So uh, just suggest what, how can you able to actually use this mechanism to actually convert it into rotary shaft? Okay, so by using here, if you think by using here, then draw out the, the, the sketch out how you actually put the gear into the system. Eh? Do you want to submit? Anyone? Seorang aja jawab ni, Lokman. You want, you, if you don't want to submit, then I'm okay. It's up to you because I assume that because I given this in a PowerPoint slide, okay? So I assume that later on, you guys will actually do it on your own. Guys, are you there? Kenapa seorang aja yang reply? Why, why one person saja reply? Lau, dot, lau, we'll discuss later. Yeah, I plan to. If I have time, I plan to. I just take out one uh, example, 
what you have uh, submitted, then we discuss together. Maybe uh, not during the class on Thursday, but on Monday. Lah. Okay. If you want, then I open the submission. So that submission task will be next week. Okay. I'll give you one week to submit it. Okay. Make sure that uh, sketch it. If you uh, for for this one, you need to sketch. For the others, is that uh, you can uh, pop, uh, cut paste this one and put it in, in the in the word and then just list out what type of mechanism and don't just list it out label it okay where, where do you think is slider and crap so label it label it where's the slider and crap where is the gear so label it so i know that student understand where is the location of each mechanism eh? all right so okay sure I, I will discuss that later once you submit so i think uh that we're all for class okay uh, and remember uh, the feedback for today. The feedback for today is very simple. If you can actually open it now. Can you do that? I think uh, five minutes to do that now. Open your. Open your. Let me just open it. Open your you learn. Submit the feedback. The feedback is very simple. Okay, I just hold on a second. The question. Student, okay. The question is nine. Jadi, ni ni kan? Class reflection set. Click. Okay, answer the question. Okay, your name, blah blah blah. Okay, what did you learn today? Okay, week this week. Um, I just want to know what do you think about class? So for, uh, not for eh, from eh, from week one to week nine, which is today. What do you like and dislike? If any lah, if you I don't know if we dislike about my class. Eh? Uh, if we dislike, then I think we need to tell you what we dislike. Lah. But if you like, please let me know too what you like about class. Eh? And um, uh, can you understand my explanation on topics? Eh? Example for today, do you understand? No. If you don't understand, then please explain why you don't understand. Eh? So that I understand why you don't understand. Okay? Do you get what my 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 gifs, eh? So, do you prefer synchronized class, asynchronous class, or combination of both four? I, this one I do not know. So, it depends on, it's up to you to answer. Synchronized class is something like this. A synchronized class is something that I do not make this class live like this, but I give you the task in you learn. It means that, okay, uh, 9.4, what you need, what video you need to read. Okay, I give you, I put the slide for point. Based on a slide, you need to uh, answer the question now. That one is a synchronous class. Or do you want both mode? Both mode means that, like today, other than what we have this right now, I give you additional. But that one maybe will be too much for your uh, SLT, student learning time. And so it, it's up on you. If I have synchronous class, normally uh, it's done by today. Eh? Okay. And do you agree that asynchronous class give you more flexibility during learning and still able to achieve the learning part of the topic? Okay. So as I I know that most of you sometimes it's very hard with the internet connection and so on. So that's why you do not have you don't want the synchronous class. If therefore we have the asynchronous class, so you can actually learn accordingly according to your time. Maybe you can you need to go somewhere to actually get the internet connection. So just answer that. Only that, that question only. Okay? Alright, so I think uh any more question? If no question, then uh the feedback uh for the task that I um uh, uh, give to you just now, I will uh make the submission uh submission instruction eh, over there. Okay, so um Let me see, okay, 31 student here, eh? 31 student, all right, that's all. Thank you very much. Uh, so tomorrow we don't have class, eh? So we will continue class next week. Um, I think uh, Christmas uh, holiday is on Friday, okay? So next week we still have class, eh? All right, that, that's all. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye. Don't forget to do the feedback form. By 12, eh? Or do it now. I propose do it now, eh? Okay. Okay, let me just look at the student who have done it. Um, um, 
this is too big. It's too good. Alright, anyway, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye.